Christmas and Hanukkah are dim memories, but it's likely you're still paying off your holiday credit card bills. I know I am. Hi, I'm Mary Amoroso. Today we want to talk about getting out of credit card debt. I know it's tougher today to pay your credit card bills. 54% of folks say that. And I know how much easier it is to get into debt with all those credit card offers coming in. We will talk about how to be sensible about credit cards, maybe even creative about them. As we go to break, viewers, is your credit card debt overwhelming? Give us a call. We'll be right back. A nation addicted to plastic. We love our credit cards. We use our credit cards. We can fan them out like playing cards. On the other hand, you know, I've heard so many stories about our Gen X folks who've been using credit cards since they were in college and who are already declaring bankruptcy because they just did not understand sensible limits to credit card use. Today we are going to talk about managing your credit card debt and getting out of debt, hopefully. And I know a lot of us are in debt because of our holiday spending. Our guest expert is Scott Bilker, a debt management expert, author of Credit Card and Debt Management, and editor and publisher of Debt Smart Magazine. How you doing, Scott? Great, Mary. Thanks for inviting me onto your show. Well, glad to see you. Now, I got to ask you, are, do you have uh, debts lingering, post-holiday credit card debt? I do have some debt, but you know, mm -hmm. I actually keep myself in a little bit of debt just so I can stay in contact with all these banks and make sure I can get the best deals out of these people. Okay, so you, you don't necessarily have a, a problem with spending. When you are approaching the holiday season, how do you manage your credit cards? Well, actually, I think the key for the holiday season is to plan the presents in advance. Uh -huh. If you plan to spend $2,000 or $1,000, whatever it is, just stick to it. It doesn't really matter if you charge it or spend the cash. It's just a matter of sticking to your budget. If you're using your credit cards and you go out there and you're going to buy, say, a $50 television, don't buy the $100 television. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. think that's really going to be the key to saving money. Okay, so, so planning in advance. And for most people, I mean, you want to stay in debt, so you stay in contact. <laughs> right. But for most people, they should aim to eliminate yes, you're, the, the revolving debt. The best thing you can do is pay off your credit cards in full every month if that's possible. But unfortunately for some people, it's just not possible. People lose their jobs. There's medical emergencies. Their, their kids are sick. Uh, friends of ours have a, a sick child, and, and it's costing them a lot of money. So, I mean they're going into debt to mm -hmm. take care of this and not everyone can pay their bills every month and sometimes you really need to be creative in your financing to make sure you get the best deals because you can't spend that twenty percent interest to borrow right. money. Right. Uh, my, my producer was telling me a statistic that I'm sure you gave her that if you have a seven thousand dollar debt credit card debt and you're paying your minimum you're only you're paying like a hundred dollars a month it's going to take how many years? That can take up to 46 years to pay back. Oh, my Lord. And by that time, you've turned, you've turned that thing with so much interest, you've pre paid you could pay many like, multiples of time in interest. Yeah, five times the original amount. Right. Even for a debt like that. And certainly the key to, to saving money on any kind of debt is to pay it back as quickly as possible. Now, one of the, the routes that you can take to getting out of debt is, you know, earning extra money. And now there's so many opportunities, certainly online today, right. to earn extra money. Even if you're selling your stuff on eBay, for instance. You know, I've sold things on eBay. I know people that sell just 
uh, collectibles on eBay, and, mm -hmm. and they make a little bit of side money, and they pay off their debt with that. Right, right. So you should be looking for other sources of income right. if you are in uh, high debt. What do you consider high credit card debt? Oh, that's a great as a, question. As a percentage of, like, your income. Hmm. I would say 20%. Uh, if 20% of your income is... Uh, unsecured credit card debt, then it's time to worry. But I think more of a time to worry is when you start having to juggle your payments, when you get bills one week that you can't pay with that week's pay. Mm -hmm. You just can't finish paying them. You can't write the checks. And you have to move one payment to the next week. And when you start to play that kind of a game, that's when it's starting to get difficult. And you have to really uh, focus on being organized and making sure you get the best deal. I mean, your first line of defense to debt is getting lower rates. And the right. only way to do that is to be very organized and good with your debt management. Okay, let's talk about that, getting the best rates. Because you, you do all this finagling with your cards, which is really remarkable. Tell me again how many cards, credit cards you have. And, of course, you don't have debt on all of them, but go right. ahead. I've got 80 credit cards between my wife and I. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't suggest anyone go and get 80 credit cards because you can get yourself obviously into a lot of trouble. Yes. I mean, I could buy a couple houses and a car, sure. but I couldn't pay it back. Right, right. So that would be the, you know, I'd be in a lot of trouble then. I use a couple cards, that's it. But I do like to be able to go shopping for a loan. That's why I don't mind having so many cards. If, uh, if one bank tries to raise their rate, and now banks are, their rates are really high, 24%, 25% I've seen rates. Mm. That's extraordinarily high, but half of those 80 cards on a continuous basis are offering me better than 9.9, .9, better than 2.9. Hey, 0%. I've got a lot of 0% credit cards. Okay. Well, now tell me how this works, though, because I was just looking. I happened to be looking at my credit card bill the other day, which I usually don't do. I just pay them. But they were offering some sort of, I think it was a 7% rate for me to transfer. I guess that means to take whatever debt I have on other cards and eliminate it and write one of those little, they have those checks that they attach right to your bill, right? Yes. Which is nasty. And I, I, yeah, I mean, it encourages overspending. I could. But uh, is that a good thing to do? Well, it really depends. You have to really read the fine print. In fact, in this, my premier issue of Debt Smart Magazine, I have an article about reading the fine print. And when you take advantage of these low rate offers, which some are very good, yeah. you just have to read the fine print. You have to be careful of the cash advance fees. 7% is a great rate, but there could be, say, a 3% one-time fee to write that check. Oh. And if the offer is only good for six months, 3% in a six-month period is like 6%. In right. a 12-month period. Right. right. So, mm -hmm. And plus the 7%. So now that's we're at 13%. Yeah, right, so right. what you thought was 7 is really 13 And that's okay if you have 20% debt, yeah. but you just want to know where you are. Because if you were paying off, say, a 12% card with that 7%, and it's really 13%, yeah, then no it's good. costing you. Right, right. Um, and I noticed also the offer that I got. I'm trying. It was either Citibank, Mastercard, or Chase Visa. One of those two. Um, I noticed that my annual interest rate, I think, is 14.9 percent. So, w what happens then? Th my whatever I have on that card stays at 14.9, and whatever whatever I transfer goes to that 7 percent. Oh, that's another great question because that is very confusing. And yeah. the very first time that happened to me before I was into writing about this stuff, uh -huh. you know, this is one of the things that actually motivated me is that kind of confusion. What happens to your balance? Your balance right now is at 14. Then they're giving you checks to transfer more money over at seven. Now, assuming it is really seven because there's no fees or anything, when you do that transfer, what happens to the other balance? Well, they're gonna apply your payment to whatever balance they want first, and guess which one they're gonna apply it to, the 7% one. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna leave that 14% balance oh. there, and that's gonna still grow at the so rate they, of 14%. So they, they really have a double track. Yes. Yes, and they're going to... That's gonna, pretty bad. <laughs> so, say you had like uh, a $5,000 card, and 4000 yeah. of it was at 19%, and you transferred 1000 at 3%. Right. Well, your payments that you're making will probably go to the 1000 at 3%, and the rest of it at 20% or whatever is going to continue Sit to... there. Right. Like, no balance adding, is getting paid off. Adding the interest fees on. Yes, and that's something to be very careful of. Okay. So, now you say read the fine print. I, I'm not very patient. And I, I think the rest of, the, of America shares my sentiments, unless you really are a money guru or a numbers guru. I mean, can you call them up? Well, yeah, yeah. Do they have people who understand the fine print enough? 
I wouldn't. I, you wouldn't I, do that. I would. Yeah, I wouldn't really trust what they say. You know, because yeah. uh, uh, when it comes down to it, the only thing that's going to count is what's written. Uh huh. Right. So, and, and those telephone reps, the, some of times they're just fifteen-year-old kids. I've I've been called by like fifteen-year-old telephone reps from other states. Really? Yes. So. <laughs> Child labor. <laughs> they have no. What they say is irrelevant. <laughs> right. They have no idea. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's. A, let me ask you another question now. The other thing that I did, I'm paying. I have one credit card that I use a lot, which is my American Express, because that has to be paid off every month. Although they now have some little deal where you can right. let it linger, but I never do that. And then I have two other credit cards that I use. One of them I had down to zero, which I was very proud of. And we bought a dishwasher, which I have, we bought top of the line dishwasher, you know, status symbol, whatever. Um, so I've been trying to pay that off uh, pretty quickly, like over a period of three months. Um, but meanwhile, I had to transfer money for my son into his co campus cash account. So um, should I pay off one faster than the other? Pay off the one with the highest rate first. That's the, your best strategy for debt repayment. So what, what's the rate on the... Um, I, don't, I don't even know. I, I noticed one was 14. I don't know what the other... The other one might be 18. I don't know. Yeah, definitely look at that. And, and there's so many rates at the bottom of that statement, and it's just not so easy to read. I wonder why. But mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right. there's a cash advance rate, there's the charge rate, there's the special promotions rate, all these different rates. So make sure that the rate is the correct rate. Okay, and, and in line with this, is it better to get a store credit card from the, you know, the place where I bought the appliance or to just use a credit card? to buy the appliance? Hmm. Well, that really depends. Yeah. Um, sometimes, well, first of all, in general, store cards, the interest rates are sky high, over 20%. Oh, wow. Sometimes like 23%. Okay, so usually not a good deal. Right, but sometimes they might give you, say, a 10% discount if you get the store card and use it. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I would get the store card, use it, get the 10% off. When the bill comes, transfer the balance from the other card, now I got the 10% off. I didn't pay any rate at all yeah. because it was a purchase, so I got the grace period. Right. So I get a month no interest on the 22% card, but oh, I get charged nothing. So creative. Then I transfer it over, and then I got it at the lower rate. Okay, so creative. Uh, we are going to go to break. Uh, we will start taking your calls after this break. For our first three callers whom we take, they will get Scott's book and Scott's software for free, so we'll start taking your calls. As we go to break, we want to ask you viewers, have you taken advantage of offers for credit cards with low introductory rates? Give us a call. We'll be right back. Looking at the book, Credit Card and Debt Management, by none other than Scott Bilker, who is with us in the studio. He is also the uh, editor of Debt Smart Magazine. And uh, before we go to the phones, I want to ask you the question. During break, the lighting guy came in and said, I got a credit card, card question. His question was, good guy. He, he called up. He had a 19.8% interest rate on his... MasterCard or whatever, uh, whatever. He called the credit card company, said, I, give me a lower rate. They said, okay, we'll give you 11%. His question was, does that 11% apply to the debt he already has on the card or simply to new purchases? Mm, well, I would assume, but you know how that word goes. Yes, I know. That it would apply to the balance that he has right now. And they may take it that way, too. But I think he should call back to verify that. And if not, he should say, hey, I thought it was on everything. I want it to be on everything. That was my understanding of it. Also, he should get the name of the person he spoke with. I always write that stuff down. Uh huh. Yeah, you you, uh, you told me. I remember that you basically keep a running diary of everything, every contact you've had, the interest rate, 
the purchases, everything that has to do with each of your cards. Right. I, I even tape record the conversations, too. Oh, you are really paranoid. <laughs> oh, only because <laughs> one time I called and uh, they said they were going to do something. I forget it was wave a fee lower rate. And the bill came. It didn't happen. I called up. They said, we never said that. Uh -huh. I said, I talked to this person. They're like, um, we have no record of that. He's 50 and right? he's in another state. You know, right? yeah, I right. call them. They say, hey, you know, the, the recording says you could be recorded for right. training. And right. I always say, yeah, you too. Right. There you go. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're going to go to the phones. We've got Kim on the line. How are you? Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine, thank you. Thanks for call, have, uh, taking my call, I should say. And you my, get the book I'm for free. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. My question is, is it not better to search out for a better low-interest loan at a bank or a credit union rather than going hopping around from Visa card to Visa card? Okay, which is sort of the question I was aiming at with this uh, purchase of the dishwasher. Should I do a home improvement loan and just go after all the things I want in my kitchen at once? Right, well, I think uh, that Kim should look at whatever option is really available to her. Um, whatever is your best loan that you could get rate-wise is the one you should do at, that, at the moment in time. If you can get a low rate a credit card, I have some 0% credit cards. Until that zero rate's over, I'm going to take advantage of those loans. And then after they're over, if I can't get a rate that's very good, then I go to a credit union. Yes, it takes time to go from one loan to the next, but really it's going to be a great paying job. I've saved thousands of dollars. Um, over the course of myself having credit card debt. By tra doing all these transfers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, m when I first started out having debt at those higher rates when I was in my early 20s that were 90 percent, and yeah. I got them all the way down to like 2.9 percent, and I owed a <laughs> lot back then. Yeah, right. I owed, well, like, you were paying your tuition that way, right? Right. Some yeah. of my tuition, some books. Right. And um, I was paying like maybe $5,000 a year in interest payments. Mm -hmm. Just by restructuring my debt, that went down to 1000 So. $4,000 I saved in one year wow. just in interest payments. Wow. And yeah. for a poor student, that's pretty pretty just, darn good. Just for making phone calls and just for doing research. It's okay. worth it. Okay. I want to ask a question on Kim's behalf, though, because we just, last week, we did a show on uh, predatory lenders, mm. and we were talking specifically about some of those companies that say, you know, come on into us. We, you can consolidate all your credit card debt with this home equity loan. Um, and one smaller payment a month, is that a good deal or a bad deal? Well, that's a good question because, you know, when you, when you consolidate under a home equity loan, now you're putting your home at risk. Right. It's not just unsecured credit card debt. Right. It's secured to your home. Yeah, it's secured. Plus, if you want to do a home improvement later and get another loan, now the bank might not want to be in that third position because mm -hmm. you got your primary position, then second position on this new home equity. Other banks won't want to be in that in that uh, third position to get paid back if there's a problem. Again, to me, it depends on the cost. The best loan is the cheapest loan. You can always get a different loan, and you're always going to get the same thing, which is just money to pay back whoever you owe so, uh, from the first loan. So if that home equity loan turned out to be a good loan, then I would take it. But, but the other question that I think you have to ask too, which is something people are, don't really realize that sometimes there's a balloon mortgage, a balloon payment at the end, right? Mm, yeah, that can happen. That's bad. That can happen. If Where you basically you've just been paying the interest, and after five years, bingo, they want the whole uh, principal nut. Right. Yes. In that way, when you talk about predatory lenders, they're just kind of doing like math tricks. Yeah. I'll give you another one: the biweekly mortgage. Have you heard about this? Yeah, I thought it was a good thing. No? <laughs> no? Well, they give you the impression that by paying it in faster increments yes. more frequently, right. you're, you're going to save money. Right. And right. that's the magic of it. You're paying biweekly. But it's just not true at all. A 30 year, on a 30-year mortgage, mm. if, you, if you made a biweekly payment, a true biweekly payment, and we'll get to what that is later, versus a, a true monthly payment, the savings from paying faster after 30 years hold on. Right. One hundred dollars. Oh. That's it. For sure, for sure. Let's go to the phones. We've got Betty on the line. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. What's your question? Um, I just got out of a bad relationship, and my credit line is horrendous now. I have no money left in my savings. Um, Sharky pretty much just told, took everything, and uh. I. Uh, so, so you had a spender uh, who was the your significant other? Yeah. Oh. Okay. I mean, we've, we've since broken up, but I need to know how I could possibly get all the money that I lost from Chucky because he just, seriously, he just screwed me over and I lost pretty much $2,600. Okay. And, and, and you also have 
bad credit? I don't, I have bad credit now, I suppose. I mean, like, oh, you have you haven't checked your, so you don't know what your credit's like. I have, my last statement, there was, uh, there was a takeout of about 1500 and it wasn't me, and he was the only person other that could have done it. it okay, this is from the bank? This is from the bank, yes. Okay, and, and did he rack up credit card debts? Mm-hmm. He did? Yeah. Okay, to the amount of? Uh, just, oh, God. I haven't checked it in a long time. It's pretty much everything. I had 2600 then I had the 1500 Uh-huh. So. Oh, boy. And, and are you paying those off? I, I'd have to, but I just got fired from one of my jobs, so I have nothing oh, left. You're in, you're in a tough position. Yeah. Yeah. How, how is it possible that I could, is it some way that I could manage my money better? I, I need to save. I need to save and be able to be able to get it all back. Okay. Okay. Thoughts here. Well, Betty. Betty. Well, Betty, I first would like to ask you, can you prove that he made those charges? I don't know, cause well, yeah, like I, I, I want to take him to court, but it's that would be good if you could, if you could take him to small claims court to try to collect that money, and you can show that he spent it. Uh -huh. You might not have the actual receipts, but on your statement, if you show that he made the charges, yeah, then maybe you would have a case. I definitely would talk to uh, an attorney about that because you're talking about a lot of money. Yeah, I, so, but attorney, is it possible that I could get the attorney for not as much money? Like, I, I it would be expensive, though, wouldn't it? You know what? I would call just to find out. Maybe you can get someone to give you a consultation for $50, and in your case, it may be worth it. Okay. That's what I would do. Also, when it comes to organizing your, your debts, contact your creditors before you have any trouble making payments and let them know what's happening in your life and that you, you want to make good and on, on your debts, even though you have some disputes. Hey, wait a second. I just thought of something. If you can dispute those charges that you didn't make them, if he used your card, did he have authorization to do that? No. So I don't know. I don't know. It could have just been Mac charges. Like, it's just, I don't know. ATM charges? On. Yeah. And uh, does he still have access? I hope you've shut him oh, down. No, I've, I've, since, okay. I've since canceled it. Good, good. Uh, yeah, if it's ATM, right? Yeah, you that, have the card and you have the access number. Yeah, if it's ATM, that's going to be tough to prove. But if there are credit card charges and you didn't make them and you didn't sign for them, you can call your credit card bank and you can dispute those charges directly with them and say, hey, I didn't make the purchase. I didn't sign for those. Someone else used my card, and I'm not paying that. Okay. And they'll investigate that, and they'll get, they will have to show that you made the, those uh, charges. Otherwise, you'll get a chargeback. And, of course, legal action would also be something I'd look into. But, you know, look into the chargeback option first. Okay. Okay, best of luck, Betty. We are going to go to break. As we do, we want to ask you, have you ever bargained with a credit card company to reduce penalties or interest rates? Give us a call. We'll be right back. Okay, we were just looking at some credit card traps. We are here with Scott Bilker, who is the author of the book Credit Card and Debt Management and also the editor of Debt Smart Magazine. We're going to go to the phones. We have Helene on the line. How are you? I'm oh, good. How are you? Okay. And your question? Um, I'm wondering what you can tell me about Ameridebt. Okay. Company. And I, I heard uh, I heard an ad advertisement on uh, CBS News Radio from Meredith just today. They say if you are in trouble with your credit cards, go to them. They will talk to creditors for you and help you pay off your credit cards. Well, Helene, it's true that credit card counselors can negotiate lower rates for you. Um, of course, you could uh, try to do this yourself, too. But th there are some downsides to using credit counselors, and that is sometimes it can be reported on your credit report, and it almost looks like a, a bankruptcy. Also, there might be restrictions on you using your credit. You might not be able to use your credit cards anymore. They might freeze your accounts. Um, sometimes I think of them as voluntary collection agencies. Okay. Where basically you're going to them. You know, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm saying that it's an option. You should look at all your options when you have trouble with your finances. Sure. Call them. See what they can do for you. See how much it will cost. Definitely ask if it's going to show up in your credit report. And definitely ask about the restrictions. Yes, and and my, if it's, my main concern was whether or not it would show up in my credit report. Do you think it will? It's possible. Well, ask, ask them if it will. Okay. Always ask. Okay. And these, these are often 
organizations that are funded by credit card companies? Is that true? Yeah, they're not funded, but they get a percentage of what they... I see. So they're getting a commission. Yeah, they get a cut. Mm -hmm. like, a, like 6%, I forget what it is, but there's an industry standard for them. So they get a percentage of what they get you to pay back, hence why I call them voluntary collection agencies, right, right. because they get a percentage. Uh huh. Okay. We're going to go to the phones. We have Joyce on the line. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. You sound upbeat. What's your question? Well, I think this is a great show. Thank and, you. And um, I, basically, I had the same question that the last girl had about a Meredith and 1 800 mm -hmm. pay bills. Uh huh. She got in ahead of me, so I'm, I'm really sorry, but that was what my question was. Okay. And um, I am going to buy his book, but I. Yeah, I'm going to buy it. Um, but I wanted to ask him, if you are in credit card debt, uh, you know, is there anything like that without these little fine prints and stuff that you could possibly do um, if you're like a low-income person? Well, Joyce, again, it's always important to call those credit card banks and see if they're going to give you a better interest rate deal. Make them fight for your business. Do you have more than one credit card? Yeah, do I have three. Okay, do you have a zero balance on any of those three? No. Are, are you maxed out on all of them, meaning that you charge to the, the, all uh, the credit you have? Only one's maxed out. Okay, the other two have some interest, uh, have some... They have some space, yeah. Okay, great. Call one of those and say, look, give me a good transfer rate. Make sure it's better than the one you have on the first card. Right. And then you'll do a balance transfer right now. Okay. You, you have two places to go loan shopping. Okay. Give them a call and see what they do and ask them to say, look... If you lower my rate from what it is now, a couple points, and you give me a transfer rate, I'll transfer money right now. Just see what they say. Okay. And if the first person you get on the phone doesn't help you, ask to speak to the supervisor. Okay. You know, they're in business to make money, and, you know, you're spending your money. It's like buying anything else. Okay. It's like going shopping for anything else. You're in control. You're going to spend the money. You're going to pay the interest, so make them fight to get it. Okay, great. Okay, Joyce. Take it easy. We're going to... Okay, we are, uh, we, we were going to take a call, but we're not going to do that. Um, we were going to, I want to talk to you about these traps, the buy now, pay later. No interest for three months. Ooh. Gee, that sounds good. And it may be good, but you got to be careful because sometimes those buy now, no interest for three months, you know, particularly at furniture stores. Yeah, right. right. If you miss that three-month deadline by even a day, they'll start charging you that high rate of interest, and, uh -huh. and also they'll go back in time. Oh, really? They'll at, charge you interest? On the previous three months. Oh, wow. That's and, bad. And they'll add it right on. Oh, my. So that's something to be careful of. Again, the best way to take advantage of that, take the 0% for three months, two right. weeks before it ends. Pay it off. Pay it off, transfer the bounce on a low-rate card. Mm -hmm. And now you got the best of both worlds. Okay. We're going to go back to the phones. We have Kathy on the line with us. How are you? Hi. How are you doing? Good. Um, I am just calling because you asked the question, have you ever um, gotten those low interest yeah. rates? Yeah. Well, probably for the past two and a half years I've been doing it. You know, okay. I'll get one for 1.9%. Um, and the last one I had was 1.9 lasted a year. Wow. And I was really able to pay, I think, $1,800 off of my... Um, off the, the credit, and wow. now it ended, so I got another one for 3.9. Uh huh. But somebody told me that it's it's that shows up on your credit report. Is it a bad thing that you keep switching to lower interest rate cards each time uh -huh. it expires? The, uh, the good deal. Uh huh. Okay. Does that show up? Okay, Kathy. I tell you, you're smart, and you've saved a lot of money. So who cares? Even if it did. You must have saved, I mean, the, the average rate's like 18%. You paid 1.9. You saved thousands of dollars by doing what you did. And to keep doing it makes a lot of financial sense. Does it show up on your credit report? It shows up in that you have a balance on a couple cards. Actually, it's not a bad thing. If it was a bad thing, I'd have no credit cards at all, but they keep giving them to me. And they keep <laughs> giving you offers because you're doing such a great job managing your credit. They want your business. They know you're going to switch. If they give you a good deal, you're doing a great job. You're saving a lot of money. It's a smart move. Good for you. Okay, you get our good, good credit girl of the day award. We are going to go next to Edith. How are you? Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. Your question. I love your show. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask Scott, earlier he mentioned about um, credit card companies that have zero interest rate. And I was wondering, how do you find out about them? Where are they? Who are they? 
Well, Edith, um, uh, not to plug a few banks, but uh, Capital One is one I know for sure. has a 0% intro rate and then it's like 9.9 .9 thereafter, but they have a lot of deals and not everyone's gonna qualify for that. The most of the time where I get my low rates is they come to me. Those, those advertisements you get in the mail, I'm sure you get them. Do, do you get a lot of promotions yes, or offers? Yes, I do, and I read the small print and I throw them out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you haven't gotten any good ones, Edith? No. Okay, well, a lot of the ones I get come to me that way, and you can also do some research, research to find them. If you go to my website at www.debtsmart.com, I wrote an article about getting those lower rates, and you can look through that. But otherwise, if you look around for those low rates and those zero intro rates, you will find them once you start hunting them down. Okay. Uh, it's more common to get like a 2.9% rate, but okay. those zero percent rates are out there. Because the 2.9% the lower interest rates, do they have them for the lifetime of the, the loan? Oh, never. You're never going to get a rate like that forever. Okay. But even if it's six months, and, the, and, and Kathy was saying she had it the last caller for, for a year. A year, a year is good. great. And I've had 0% for 10 months. And when that ended, I thought, wow, that's the end of a great rate for 10 months. Okay. I got another offer from another card for 10 more months at 0%. Okay. So you just have to be ready to transfer. I yes. See. Okay. And uh, we want to point out, by the way, that if you do log on to the website, www.debtsmart.com, you get a free subscription to the magazine, DebtSmart. Okay. We're going to go to break. As we go to break, we want to ask you viewers, have you used credit cards to finance a business or the purchase of a car? Give us a call. We'll be right back. Okay, we're looking at some of those horrible numbers. $8,000 in debt, and if you pay uh, it off at 18% interest, it's going to take you, what was that figure, 25 years, and you've paid like $15,000 in uh, interest charges. Okay, we are here with Scott Bilker, who is the uh, author of Credit Card and Debt Management, and also editor of DebtSmart magazine. We are going to go to the phones. We have Buzz on the line. How are you? Okay, how are you? It's a great show. Well, thank you. It's interesting, isn't it? Well, it really wonderful is. Wonderful information. That's very useful. Um, I'm one of those that had like uh, thirty-eight to forty-two thousand dollars in debt. Got it down to seven. Oh, good for you. Yeah, I have to had charts and grids and everything. I did yeah. all the shopping around and everything, but uh -huh. um, uh, now I'm starting to get it up again, and I, I'm still shopping to get out of what I got left. Uh, it's about uh, uh, the zero percent rate. There's, I noticed the very fine print has on it like six dollars a month. It can run into like seventy-two dollars a year in annual fee which is more than usual, like 20 or $25 fee. Uh-huh. And uh, I was wondering, you know, that then it's not worth it to take the 0%, is it? And then I have another question. I've got a okay. 4.9 that I negotiated for the duration of the balance. Uh-huh. It doesn't uh -huh. pay me to take out any of that and put it in a 2.9 or anything for six months or eight months or a year, does it? Okay. So, well, your first question is... 0% uh, cards. Yeah, with, with a, a, an annual fee of maybe $72 a year. Well, Buzz... Uh, even for $72, that would probably be worth it for if it was truly 0% because I don't know how much debt do you have on that card. I think you said 8000 or, or you have 8000 to, to get down, right? Yeah, yeah. Something but, like that. Yeah, well, actually, I got it back up. It's around 12 or 14 Oh, okay. And I'm trying to get it back down. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Okay, so you have twelve or 14000 and it only costs you $72 a year. Right. I, I think that's worth it. But can you can you put that whole amount on one card? Can you put that on? No, no, they've got like a six thousand limit. Yeah, so okay. Six thousand out of that uh, four. Right. They, no, I've, I've got this four point nine, which is pretty good, isn't it? For the until I pay off the balance. Okay, but first we'll talk about the zero percent. How much do you have at the zero percent? I got two cards, both uh, both about six thousand. Okay, well then seventy-two dollars, I think, is very inexpensive. When you really figure out what the true rate is on that per year, it's going to be very little. Now, when it comes to the other one that you negotiated four point nine until it's paid off, yeah. should you transfer it to like a two point nine for six months? Right. That's a tough call because four point nine is really good. And the question would be: Is after that two point nine is over, can you get another low rate again? If you're confident that you could, I know I could because I have so many credit cards. They're begging me to transfer my balances all the time. So I know I would have that option. I would take a chance because I know I have that option. 
but really 4.9 forever. That's great. I wish I could transfer my whole mortgage over to that. Right, right. Don't we all? So does Alan Greenspan. Anyway, okay, Buzz, there you go. Uh, best of luck and try to keep those credit card debts down. We're going to go next to Lisa. How are you? Good, how are you? Fine, thank you. What's your situation? Um, okay, about three years ago, um, my husband and I went into um, a credit counseling service because he was a commissioned salesman and his check every month was different, so we ran into right. like a problem. Uh -huh. And um, at the time, we thought it was the best idea because we didn't want to go to bankruptcy. Right. But um, recently, we tried to um, buy some furniture, and like in the last three years, we have totally never been late. We're fine now. We have no debt problems at all right now, but we're still paying off the balance, which I think is around maybe sixty-five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And um, when we tried to buy the furniture, it came back and they denied us. Okay. And then I had called um, and we got our credit reports and everything, and it is on the credit report. And the counseling service was like, well, that's really kind of like a red flag, like the um, the man had just said um, to you know, like like that you almost file bankruptcy or whatever mm -hmm. and my question was what is the best way because they told me like well you just need to pay out of it well i don't have sixty five hundred dollars to pay out would, would the best thing to be maybe to like get like a small loan and then pay out of the program since i can pay the loan or will i even get turned down you know for that loan because since then i have got other credit cards Right, right. And I ha they have not denied me. It's just, I don't know, that furniture store did deny me for that. And, and I think uh, underneath your question is the question of how long that credit counseling stays on your credit report. Mm, and that is definitely a good question, Lisa. I would say that as far as the furniture store goes, they're the ones that lost out because you would have bought their furniture and paid them back. So I'd go to a different furniture store and uh, give them your business. But as far as being concerned with having that on your credit report, um, I would be concerned too. And that, that is one of the downfalls. But again, they, you did get out of some debt, so you know it's kind of the price to pay. But now my question to those counselors would be, I don't know if you asked them, is um, if you pay out, will it come off your credit report? Is that the impression they gave you? They said it would, but they said that, you know, it might be like a, um, not instantaneously, like I would have to call and maybe tell them I've paid out of this program and, you know, can you please remove this from my report? Well, but, do you have to actually pay out of the program or can you just say I'm done with the program? I believe you have to pay out. I don't think you can, you, I think you have to show proof. I don't know for sure, but I think you... That's what the counseling service told me, that you have to pay out in order for it to get off your credit. Well, right. if the only transaction that you're trying to do is the furniture transaction, but you're still getting credit from other sources, then if it was me, I wouldn't be so concerned. But if it kept creeping up again, where maybe I was going to buy a house and I was having trouble because of that, then it would be more serious time to consider getting rid of it by borrowing money and buying out of it. Is there anything else coming up? Yeah, we're probably about to buy a house within the next three months. Hmm. and. She, my counselor wrote me a, a letter saying, you know, to a mortgage company that, you know, they have never been late, you know, they've been paying their payments, but um, I personally just, I, I want to get out of it because I didn't realize, you know, the detrimental effect that it was going to go against other credit, because it's embarrassing when people come back and say, I'm sorry, you've been declined, and we're like, mm -hmm. but, you know, we've paid every month, and, you know, everything's been fine since then, and they don't want to hear that, a computer just declined it and they don't want to hear your reasoning behind you know how great you've been for the last two years they just that's it and I mean would it be better to just pay to get a small loan if I could get it and pay out of the program and then just pay on the loan well then that would depend on what's the rate of the loan how much will it cost you overall I mean will it has the program been so good that it would hurt your uh, your ability to pay it back if you did it yourself, although I would opt to do it myself personally. And maybe that it's been a long time and you've had no problems, it, it would be a better course of action to do it yourself. Again, I would weigh it by how much it would cost versus what I would get. And for me, I wouldn't be worried about uh, being declined in certain situations. Uh, I can understand how it could be embarrassing, but I wouldn't be embarrassed by it. But buying the home, I the would be concerned. Is serious business. Yes. Although mortgage companies do tend, you know, they look at every single problem on your credit report and they ask you to send a letter in, right? I they're, think in they're her very case, detailed about it. 
with her counselor writing yeah, her the right. letter, I think it's going to be very positive for her. Okay. Best of luck, Lisa, with the uh, house purchase. As we go to break, we want to ask you, do you have too many credit cards? Has that interfered with your ability to get a mortgage? talking about how to get out of debt, particularly credit card debt. We are going to go to the phones. We've got Michelle on the line. How are you? Hello. Uh, how are you? Fine, thanks. Your um, question. The reason why I'm calling, um, I'm going through a divorce, and uh -huh. I've had some medical problems the past year. Yeah. And my one question was, I was late on a couple mortgage payments. Uh-huh. And my other question was, that I, um, I have credit debt, like 2600 and I'm trying to pay it off, but... Mm -hmm. You know, it's at a 20-some percent interest rate. Yeah. And I've never had a credit problem, and I don't want to start now. Right, right, you so don't. So what do I do, like, to correct the situation? Okay, let's start with the uh, late mortgage payments, which get recorded, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, those late mortgage payments, Michelle, they're really going to hurt your chances of refinancing at a better rate, but chances are you have a pretty good rate now. What is your mortgage rate? Uh, seven and three eighths. That's not so bad. That's a pretty good rate. So, I mean, late, I'm meaning I pay it by the end of the month. I'm not, like, months late. Did you have to pay the late fee? Yes. Okay. Well, you know, if only in, if you go to refinance that mortgage with the lender are you going to have a problem. Okay. I would be more concerned right now, because you already have the house. I'd be more concerned with, you know, that high interest rate credit card debt. Right. It's 26 now, and I don't want it Ooh. to get any higher. Wow. That's really high. That's, that's really a high rate. No, I'm 2600 Okay, yeah. okay. And what's the rate, like 20-something percent still? Discover, um, whatever, yeah, the highest. Okay. Do you have any credit cards with no balance on it? Yes, I do. Oh, great. Call that credit card and tell them that if they'll give you a good rate today, you'll transfer your balance right now. Otherwise, tell them not to waste your time. But if the first person doesn't help you, talk to their supervisor. That credit card with no balance, there's your ticket to really getting a good deal, and you're going to save money right now. Just right. make that phone call. And you could consolidate, like, you know, that into, say, what if you have two credit cards? One's like a lesser. Would they consolidate the credit card company, the one balance on a couple different credit cards? Well, it depends on how much your credit limit is. Okay. If you have enough credit limit on that zero balance card, then right. you're going to be able to move it all over. Right. The other debt over to that zero balance if get, card. If you get the rate that you're, you're looking for, a much Good lower point. rate. Yes. Okay, best of luck. We're going to go next to Stacy. How are you? Fine, how are you? Thank you. Yeah, what's your question? I want to find out. Um, I moved into a house in July, and I want to find out about um, paying for, uh, like um, the woman before was saying about a mortgage being late. Mm hmm. And what I want to find out is that we're behind by a month. How do I go about catching up on that month behind? Okay, Stacy. so you're just a month late on your new new home mortgage. Yes, I am. Okay, did they contact you and say anything or in writing about that? Well, every um, time I get, I receive the bill in the mail, um, for the mortgage to be received in the mail, we, my fiancé and I, we're getting married in May, and we're having a hard time as it is just uh, getting the money you know, together for the mortgage. Okay, well, what I would do, and this is something you'd have to think about, is I would maybe try to borrow money to make that mortgage payment so that way I don't have that problem. I might borrow it from another credit card or from family members, but I'd be careful about doing that. Otherwise, call your bank, uh, call the mortgage company and tell them you're having some trouble and that you will pay them at a certain time. Maybe they'll work something out with you. But the, the important thing is to contact them and let them know what's going on. Right. You've got to communicate because uh, you've got this constant lateness and it re that really looks bad on a credit report, right? Yes, yeah. and, and by just calling them, you might be able, they're not going to report that, maybe. Right. They might not report anything as long as you work something out with them. Okay, okay. Well, we wish you the best of luck, Stacy, with the uh, mortgage and the wedding. We are going to go to break. We will be back to wrap up in just a moment, so don't click away. Okay, I just want to remind you, you can get Scott Bilker's book and software, Credit Card and Debt Management, 
as well as the magazine, Debt Smart Magazine, by either clicking online, www.debtsmart.com, or calling 1-888-775-4410. If you do that, you can get a subscription to the magazine free, and you can get 50% off on the cost of the book and the software. We're going to take a quick call. Bill, yes. Yes. Talk to us. Okay, quickly. Scott, real quick. Yeah. Go ahead, Bill. I uh, went filed bankruptcy approximately three years ago. Well, it'll be three years this May. I want to refinance. I have no credit cards. I have not reestablished any credit. Most of the people I talk to thumb their nose. I have a home that's worth 100000 I have equity of about 20000 Can I refinance? Yeah, I think you'll be able to. You know, banks want to make money. I'm sure you're going to find some lender that's going to uh, give you the loan. The, the important thing is to just research it and uh, fill out all the applications for the ones that aren't going to charge you an application fee, just to see what's going to happen. And uh, I really have a feeling that, you know, three years is a long time. I know people that have refinanced things after less than a year. So I think you're in a good position. Your chances are good. Best of luck. Thank you so much, Scott. See you all.